Hello, you sexy biscuits, and welcome back into Fallout 4. So what I thought we could do today is just pick a random location and go. So I'm going to go for... Oh, Ten Pines Bluff could be quite fun. Okay, let's go on a random adventure. Okay, here we are in Ted Pines Bluff. Wait, this doesn't look right. I swear this looks slightly different. Whoa, this looks amazing. There doesn't appear to be anyone here, which is slightly interesting. Broken card reader. Okay, well that still opens. So we've got military grade circuit board in here and a colander, because of course you bloody do. Right, so we've got some beds and no one to be seen, although they are owned. So someone definitely lives here, but I don't remember there being this. All their plants are still there. It's like they literally just up and gone. Oh, installation K21C card reader. I haven't got a card. Oh, well, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> Okay, um, right. Is this a mod? I don't think I've downloaded a mod for Ten Pines Bluff. Oh, I got it. Um, sorry for breaking into your house. How are you? Don't much care for good neighbor. That place is nothing but trouble. I, I didn't ask, but, um, thank you. Were they locked in here? Did I just save their lives? What the hell is going on here? What's this big building? Um, that's completely locked up. Maybe one of the settlers do? Whoa, that's massive. Okay, let's go up here and see what is at the top. Another card reader. Oh. Oh, right. Okay, hang on. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. Hello? Um, anyone in here? Boston Bugle. Uh, we have a computer there. Let's found another way outside. Quite a good view from up here, though. So yeah, this place is a, a lot bigger than um, I remember it being. <laughs> I, I guess this place doesn't need my help. Whoa, is that an elevator? Does that actually work? Oh my god, let's go test it. <laughs> nice! Oh, that's amazing! Down we go! Oh, Jesus Christ, that moves quite quickly. I don't even think you'd properly stay on there. The bloody lift was falling faster than you would. So we got what looks like a medical set up here. We've got some vault -Tec logos. Okay. Door inaccessible. That's interesting. Why? Okay, I can't see anyone in there. Oh, I know where we are. We're in Shrek's bloody swamp. Hey now, you're an all-star. Sit on the toilet and have a poo. Okay, so they're back working. Can we go in this building? Um, so there's this above the bathroom? There's nothing in here that gives us any information, no notes or anything. All the computers are completely broken. Ooh, camp lights. Oh, fancy. Look at that. Oh, oh, brilliant. I think we have one more building to check out, and that's the one that's over here. So, it's inaccessible. Is anyone in there? Hello? No? Okay. Um... God damn it, I'm a bloody idiot. The first room we went in bloody had this inside. So we got a new Coca-Cola Quantum. And Magnum's case notes. Dear Mr. Magnum, first I would like to thank you for entrusting our agency with this matter. Looking for a forgotten secret military installation was a most welcome change from our usual missing person cases. Enclosed you will find Nick's discoveries, I'm guessing that's Nick Valentine, uh, which I'm sure you'll find most satisfying. I wish you the best of luck in your settlement endeavours. Thanks again for trusting Valentine's Agency, the best agency in the con Commonwealth. Oh, it's by Ellie. Okay, I know Ellie. Um, client T. Magnum. Case, Dr. Magnum inherited a mysterious ID card from his uncle. It is supposedly the key to a pre-war secret military facility. He hired us to authenticate the card, and if it is genuine, to locate said installation. Findings, cracking the ID card was no easy task. It's clearly an authentic pre-war military card, since nobody I know is able to reproduce that level of encryption today. I rigged 
a makeshift reader and managed to get a name from the card. I didn't dig deeper because of a built-in failsafe that would have wiped the card clean. Those military types did take security quite seriously back in the day. The card seems to have belonged to a certain Colonel Jack Sanders. It wasn't much to work with, but it did lead us to a bunch of old Boston Bugle articles from just before the war. It had some pretty creepy stories, I'll save you the details, but suffice to say it started with two reporters who disappeared back in 68 while investigating the K-21 projects. At the time, rumours about those projects were pretty wild, covering anything from UFO sightings to unethical civilian surveillance, to military abductions, and even to corruption at the highest level of the government. It was regularly in the news for the next nine years, but never achieved much. Sanders always came up with a fitting story, or the reporters were victim of some random accident when they didn't simply disappear. Still, one guy who was helped by some rogue BPD detective came pretty close. They cross-referenced all the official cover stories and came up with a potential location somewhere around Ten Pines Bluff. They were supposed to publish their full findings when the war happened. Of course, my next step was to head there. Scouting the area, I'm fairly confident that I have successfully located the K-21C facility, but I would advise you to be careful if you plan on setting to the area, or not to go there at all. The barn west of the camp is full of heavy automated defences and surrounded by a minefield. What? Uh... Local traders also seem to think this place is cursed as people keep disappearing around it and I'm not even talking about the surrounding region which is crawling with feral dogs, feral ghouls, raiders and the last but not least a significant raider presence in the abandoned Minutemen outposts of Zimnonja. The choice is yours, you have all the information you need to make a decision but I would go there well prepared if I were you. Thank you for your business. Nick Valentine. Well, that's uh, a little bit interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. There's a random note here. Hey, Deb, have you seen Higgins? He went to the camp last night and hasn't returned yet. He left with the ID card, so I checked the buildings, but they're all still locked. I'm starting to worry. Oh, okay. So, west. So, if we head out this way, in theory, it should be over here, right? Oh, this has really become quite interesting. Okay. Now, they did say there was a, a minefield, so we're just going to load the gun a second. Uh, just in case, I don't really want to run in here if I'm going to get absolutely annihilated. Wild mongrel, level three. Okay, let's just take that guy down. Oh, we have a robot. Um, <laughs> oh, that's clever. Oh, crap. Okay, yeah, that is definitely a scarecrow. Uh, okay. Whew. Maybe not do that. That seems like a terrible idea. Because I wasn't expecting any combat, I put on my nice cream dress. So it's probably a good idea right now if we take that off and put on something a little bit different. So I am currently using the Veteran Ranger coat. This is, of course, from Fallout New Vegas. Now, this is available on the Nexus. I'll be leaving a link in the description below. But yes, this is possibly one of my favorite armors in the game. Now, I'm going to say right now, I am wondering if there's possibly a way to turn off those robots but the only problem is I couldn't see a way in there apart from the main entrance where you found that bloody robot that completely caught me out okay so there's a window there there's nothing peeking out of there that I can see it's all pretty well hidden you wouldn't know that this place was absolutely going to annihilate you okay let's make our way oh yeah there are definitely sensors oh you see that okay is there a way in the side here? Oh, yes, there is. Okay. Uh, card reader. We don't need that right now. Okay, let's pick the lock. Oh, is that a turret up there? Okay, laser turret. As long as they don't notice me, look at that. Turret control. That's why I love Fallout, because of all the different possibilities you have and different entrances. Okay, so we've got quite a few. We've got grade, swamp, and frame. Let's go for grade first. Uh, likeness of three. Frame, right? Got it. Nice. Uh, deactivate. Oh, okay. I, I think that worked. Hello, boys! Yeah, yeah, I think that worked. They're not firing at me. That's positive. Just in care. Um, right, okay. Is, is that, that's... Oh, God, minefield! I forgot there was a minefield there, although I have been reminded. God damn, I was bloody lucky. I walked through here earlier and there's bloody mines everywhere. 
there is just a, a UFO sat right here. I love that it's actually hovering. That's amazing. It's reminding me of Independence Day. Do you remember that movie? That was a good film. We do have a military soldier here with gas mask and goggles. Okay, I wonder if they're from this military base. Oh, okay. Oh, give me a small bloody heart attack, that. Okay, there was another one there. Okay, I'm just gonna clear out the rest of these mines. How many are there out here? Yeah, what was that? <laughs> I, I think I just blew up someone's body, but I don't remember there being anyone there. Was that the person we were looking for this entire time? <laughs> oh, God. So he found a part of Quartermaster Perry. <laughs> well, his foot, to be exact. He had some bottle caps, some rounds, bobby pin, and also the K21C Lab ID card. Amazing. One day I hope to make the same kind of videos as Oxhorn, but let's be honest, I'm completely inept. Oh, we got another guy here. I don't know who this is. Probably another soldier. Okay, so now we've got the lab card. Is this it? Oh, here we go. Um, activate. <laughs> oh, oh god. Oh god. Okay. Oh, bloody hell. Wait, what did that do? That put these down? Hang on. Oh, that's clever. Oh, that is so clever. Oh, so they hide the door behind it. That's ingenious. Okay, so we're inside the lab. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what to expect here. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go down. Is there any more down here? Oh, yes, there is. What's in this door? There's no one in here. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so cool. Only lab key can unlock this door. Ooh, okay. Oh, wow. This is incredible. Mixtape. What? Hang on. Hollow tape. The new squirrel tape one. Hello. My name is Storytime Simon. And I hope you like stories. Because I love to tell stories. This one is called The New Squirrel. Come with me on this magical adventure. I'm going to stop that because that's terrifying. Um, right, we've also got a mixtape uh, take, I guess. Uh, we've got multiple mixtapes. Okay, so they don't actually appear to do anything, so that's positive, I guess. I won't get copyright music in my video, that's positive. Okay, I hear a lot of things moving around. Oh, what are they? Experiment gone wrong? Um... Hang on. I don't think they can get up here, right? Just to be sure, I'm just gonna lock this door. <laughs> you just... Alright, I'll see you later. I know what this place is. This is Colonel Sanders' room. Lab key. We've got a 40mm grenade, 10mm rounds, um, grognas. <laughs> what is that? Oh, that's amazing. Please... Oh, come on! Oh, damn it. Oh, we've got all the um, different games and stuff. I'm sure it's great, but after nuclear fallout, my eyes are buggered. Is that a picture of his friend or wife or girlfriend? He got a picture of a cat and a dog here. Oh my god, that's amazing. Look how cute they are. Oh, oh that's pretty freaking awesome. I like that. Oh, wow, this is so detailed. I love this. Perry's holotape. Oh! Perry's the guy that we found outside, the one that I accidentally exploded. Read this. Johnson, Sanders is lying to us. He's trying to minimize the problem. But by my own calculations, we only have 10 days of rations left. There are just too many of us. I've known Sanders for a long time, and I've never seen him that trigger happy. But when he ordered the bodies to be reprocessed, it suddenly all made sense. I'm pretty sure he is slowly working toward thinning the herd to a more manageable size. And I know that, like me, you don't want to be the next sheep slaughtered. His new listening roster gives us the perfect occasion to act. By us, I mean you, Mason, Turner, Hendricks, and I. 
I know you don't like Hendrix, but her knowledge of the processing units will come in handy. And as Mason rightly pointed out, keeping a woman with us will surely make the days more, well, entertaining, if you catch my drift. Plus, she's still locked up and sedated, so she won't be a problem. What is happening? At 900 hours tomorrow at the base communication specialist, you will take Mason and Turner to help you with the morning shift at the watchtower. I will already be out of the bunker as part of my normal duty so it won't raise any suspicions. Before leaving the bunker, you will go to Sanders and find an excuse to load this holotape in his terminal. Pretend you have a communication update to try or something. At 1100 hours, the tape will activate the base's anti-insurrection protocols, effectively putting it in lockdown and releasing a deadly nerve gas, except in Hendrix's cell. So I'm wondering if we can find Hendrix then. I'm told the gas is odorless and painless, so they won't know what hit them. At 1145, the base should be ours for the taking. The casualties will complete our rations. Ooh. Uh, and give us more than a year of autonomy. I know I can trust you, but remember that if you go to Sanders with this plan, you will most likely be processed with the rest of us. There is no turning back, and it is our only option. Seeing as this was found in Sanders' room, I, I think the person may have handed it over. So they were doing experiments on the soldiers that were here. Were they maybe mixing them with alien DNA? That would be interesting. I don't know if that's the case. Circuit breaker. Hang on. Oh, wow. Wow, he really had it set up so he could look down on his subject. Good God. What happens if we turn this on? Artificial skylight. Holy crap, look at this. This looks incredible. Well, apart from the mutant humans down there. I, I was not expecting this. <laughs> this has completely blown me away. I guess we have to go down there and... Uh, Exterminate the uh, the weird creatures. Although I did pick up a key card, which should allow us to be able to go into I think it's this room, right? Yeah, here we go. Oh, nice. So we've got um a kitchen in here. I've never seen those in Fallout before. What are they? Like giant mutant frogs? And why aren't they trying to attack me? Okay, well I'm a pacifist, so uh. I'll just go down there and be friendly, right? Hello, I'm the dog. Okay, maybe not. Oh, that one's called Junior. Oh, that is wrong. Okay. How did I miss? Oh no, this feels horrible. I don't want to do this. Okay, truce. Stop hitting me. Oh my God. Okay, look, I'm sorry, all right? I had no option. Okay, we need a good shot on its head. Got it. Um, that really did nothing. Oh god! So I do have one idea, and that involves, um, a bottle cap mine. <laughs> Which, um, th this is gonna go terribly. Either way, um, here we go. Put that there. Let's see if it falls for it. You know what, I'm gonna bloody put two down. Huh. Okay. Come here, giant creature! Come on! You know you wicked fly! <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna say it right now, this is slightly above my pay grade. Yeah, this is definitely proving a lot more difficult than I was expecting. Although, what can you expect from a mutated human hybrid? Okay, right. Woo! Oh, you moved! Okay, got a different idea, I'm just gonna snipe the bastard. Let's go for its left leg. See if we can do something there. Oh, okay, that's definitely going to be crippled. <laughs> Suck it. Where did, um, Junior go? Junior? I don't know why I didn't use this gun from the start. Gulper innards. Oh, these might be from, um, Far Harbor? Possibly? I don't remember, honestly. Uh, I, it's been years since I played Far Harbor. What the hell? Oh, so they put things in here and then push this button. 
delightful. By a metric capacity, it seems the alien specimens were capable of producing some kind of chemical compound with mimetic properties. Sanders obviously tried to use it to add stealth capabilities to standard army equipment. We'll have to think of a more practical use for the bunker. XP1, a few prototypes of the xenopsychic implants are still in storage, but so far the results were not promising. The average survival time of implanted subjects was 10 minutes. O'Hara broke the record during the war at the cost of his life. Mutagenic serum, Melissa's hypothesis about the failure of the XPI is that the human brain is simply not strong enough to sustain the strain of information coming from the bogey. Even after being filtered by the implant, she came up with a process to create an alien-to-human DNA bridge based on reptilian DNA. Okay, here we go. This would produce a mutagenic serum supposed to enhance human brain capabilities. Oh boy, okay. Uh, biometric paint success. The base is now coated entirely with the paint and the integration to the main control center is working like a charm. I can finally change that damn green and grey lab colours to something more comfy. XPI started tests with Melissa's mutagenic recipe. Finally got a stable prototype of the serum. We'll test it on a few salamanders. Oh, those were salamanders then. The salamanders are reacting properly to the serum. Their responses to logic tests have improved drastically and they don't show any sign of any other significant side effect after five months. Are you sure? Uh, <laughs> human prototype of the serum is completed. All laboratory tests are conclusive. It should boost my brain capacity sufficiently to tolerate the implant and fly the bogey. So they're talking about the UFO. We'll wait another month before injecting myself. I'm wondering if Hendrix is that. Gulper innards, teddy bear, Magnum's ID. Oh. Is this Magnum? Whew, okay. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's slightly terrifying. Oh, that's so cool. Look at that! And he's even got a little bloody power armor in there. That's amazing. Look at it! Oh, it's so cute! Protein H. I'm pretty sure I've seen this somewhere else. Isn't this um in a school or something? They have this same kind of pink paste. Oh. Oh, it's using tarberries. That's interesting. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, um... I was not expecting it to be there. <laughs> that terrifying. <laughs> god damn it. Oh my god. Okay. So this is where they were testing. And I'm assuming you're Hendrix, right? Right. Okay. Um, I can see why now she was in, in this. Because um, that kind of makes sense. Got three rounds left. Let's hope this works. Sorry, Hendrix. Uh, okay, I I'm gonna say right now this is slightly weird because there's a whole band set up in here. There's this weird box guitar, <laughs> um, and this microphone. Is this some form of test, like a, a brain test? Hang on, what do these buttons do? They play sounds. Okay. Was this how she was able to communicate? Either way, that is absolutely bloody terrifying. And in this room, we have the body of a dead alien. With the alien blaster! Oh, that is incredibly rare. Okay. I think in Fallout 3 there was only one, right? The salamanders are still doing fine, injecting myself today, September 7th, 2081. We'll do regular auto doc checkups to monitor my effects. Initial checkup, nominal. Major mutators have started on the salamanders, didn't know why it hasn't triggered earlier. Three have died, deformed, the other two seem fine, but have been showing noticeable increase in body mass. One of them is becoming quite aggressive, considering getting rid of it, but for now we'll simply keep them separated. Auto doc checkup, still no signs of major mutation on my end, but my brain functions have increased by 5%, not sure if it's related, but I have noticed an increase in sedation 
um, especially when sleeping, regularly waking up in a soaked bed, hoping it is just stress or diet related, starting work on an anti-mutagen just in case. An extremely aggressive, tried to poison it unsuccessfully. It seems that the serum increased their regenerative abilities to some extent. The other, I named Esmeralda, is showing signs of dog level intelligence and it's increasing daily. At this rate, we'll probably be able to play checkers together. Autodoc has identified 10% of my DNA as unknown, meaning it is not even alien but something completely new. Scary. Based on the salamander's observations, I probably only have a few months left before showing the same sign of major mutations. Sedation is not stopped and my sweat is now a gel-like substance with unidentified proteins, definitely not stress or diet related. Working day and night on the anti-mutagen trying to avoid sleeping as it seems to trigger phases of intense sedation and it is getting harder to wake up. This, this is not going well, is it? <laughs> oh boy. The aggressive salamander is now gone. She probably went into hiding in the air filtration system. That's positive. Started carrying a gun at all times. Esmeralda has now found a new way out of the bunker and for some reason started to bring me samples of mutated plants every day. I don't know if it's luck or something else, but her plants have been a big help with the anti-mutagen. Her intelligence is now off the chart of the animal kingdom and close to that of a human child. Junior? Possibly. Auto dock checkups are now getting scarier every day. It's now registering 33% of my DNA is unknown. I haven't slept for 10 days and I'm compensating with heavy use of chems. Esmeralda has entered a sort of crystallized phase. I'm guessing it's needed to complete the mutation cycle. If I'm right, the mutagen is turning us into some kind of alien mongrel, which is way more than what I was aiming for. Autodoc checkup, I don't even want to look at the results. I now realize that my sweat is actually the building material of the chrysalis phase. I didn't notice it before on the salamander's already gelatinous skin, but that is what is now encasing Esme's entire body. The same protein is found in both of us. Decided to inject Esme and me with the prototype anti-mutagen, hoping it will save some of our original DNA and prevent total conversion. Can barely stand on my feet. Need to sleep. Scared. Oh god! I was wondering why it said it was 81 again, but no. Um, September 8th, 21. 81. The hell, the security tapes confirmed that I am not hallucinating. I have been asleep for more than 99 years, yet I have the feeling that only 10 minutes have passed since I fainted in the cryo room. I was awakened by Esmeralda who was eating my cocoon. There was no telling how much longer I would have slept if she hadn't been there. Esmeralda seems to not have mutated further than before the chrysalis phase, so I'm hoping my autodoc checkup will be positive. Autodoc checkup, the results are staggering. I am apparently 10% alien, 10% unknown, and 75% human. There is a 5% gap in the analysis which I cannot account for and my brain functions have returned to pre-mutagen levels. On the outside, I still look human, but I think my head has gotten a bit bigger and my skin has a slight tint of green, so I guess the anti-mutagen worked to some extent. But I still need to do more tests, but I hope that I'm out of the woods. The other salamander is still missing. Logically, she would also be in the chrysalis phase. But without the anti-mutagen, who knows what will come out of it. I wish I could find it and inject her with the anti-mutagen. Otherwise, the safety of this place might be compromised. On the plus side, though, the outside air seems now mostly clean, which means I could probably leave if needed. So in theory, that was six years ago, so... She could still be out there, right? So I'm assuming that somewhere in the Commonwealth right now is Hendrix and Esmeralda. But where? I don't know. I think the most crazy part about this is the fact that none of it was marked. Uh, which I really like. It's a breath of fresh air. Um, for Fallout 4, not to have a marked quest. We basically just stumbled across this place and had to make up the story from what was left behind. I think my favourite part of the Fallout games is... Stuff like this, where you build the story on your own. And the problem with the later Fallout games, and even New Vegas is subject to this, is that they basically point to in the direction you need to go for everything. So you talk to someone, they say, could you go and find this? And there's a marker showing exactly where you need to go. But this was a little bit different because we actually had to find that note that said to go west. And if we hadn't, we wouldn't have known 
where to go. But as of right now, we don't know if there's any more to this, because as I said, there's no map marker. So I'm going to leave this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Honestly, this is one of the most interesting things I've found in Fallout 4. And if I'm correct, this is a mod. Um, and that blows my mind. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like down below and tell me what you guys think. What do you think happened to Hendrix and the salamander called Esmeralda? Anyway, thank you so much for watching, but until next time, that's me. Oh, bye guys.